What up, players? It's Wobot's Tale, but it's Mud. In anticipation of my upcoming game on Sunday with Red Chair Painting, I decided to pick up one of these, an Aegis Defense Line. Now, he was nice enough to, to let me borrow his, but I thought I'm probably going to need one of my own eventually, so I thought I might as well spring for it now instead of having to borrow his and then, um, and then eventually getting one anyway later down the line. I thought it'd just be cool, so here we go. Let me show you what you get in it. First, we'll look at the instructions so we know in the sprues what we're actually going to be looking at. So you've got four long sections of walls and four short single sections of walls. You can set them up on the battlefield any way you want. And it says they must be placed in base contact with at least one other section. Hmm. Yeah, I guess so that means that you just can't have any single ones or, or double ones all by itself but like in the rule book you see that they've built it as one giant wall going all the way around i wonder if you can build them as uh separate separate little wall sections hmm. um okay so some of the some of the the different options you can get for it are the comms relay which i believe is this little fella up here with the antenna you can also get them with an Icarus Last Cannon or a Quad Gun. The comms relay, what that does is any player with an unengaged model within two inches can re-roll reserves rolls. If a model is in cover behind the comms relay, it has a 5 plus cover save. So um, if your opponent is useful, uh, likes to use reserves and stuff, that might be useful. Or if you, I'm sorry, if you like to use reserves, that might be useful because it lets you re-roll them if you fail. You can also arm your gun with an Icarus Last Cannon, which is a heavy one interceptor with Skyfire, Strength 9, AP2, and Range 96, or a quad gun, Range 48, Strength 7, AP4, Heavy 4, Interceptor, Twin Linked Skyfire. I think that Twin Linked is, is great, and Interceptor and Skyfire, so great for if your opponent has enemy flyers, but that Twin Linked is is fantastic. Four shots with twin link is, is pretty good. So let's take a look at what you get inside. You've got four separate wall sections that build together to make a base. You've got these three separate sections of the center turret that build to make the turret. You've got your two uh, twin linked guns and it looks like this is the quad guns and not the Icarus Laz cannon because they have auto cannon type barrel uh, am ammo feeds as it were. You attach also the tiny little tips to the barrels, attach the two separate pieces of the gun together, and then you can put the comms relay on the back. Finally, you can also put these binocular looking things and this kind of servo skull onto it, or you can put the servo skull thing anywhere on one of the long sections. So that's all for the instructions, really simple, and it's only for this because these are all separate sections. Let's take a look at the sprue itself and we'll examine the detail and all that and get my get my creek boys off on the side so here are the turret sections standard imperial make kind of bumpy and rugged thank goodness no wall of martyrs cadian bodies at the base of it oh, i hate that so ugly you've got the four tips of your gun barrels here's the center section Almost has a kind of Star Wars y vibe to it. Um, I don't know why I said that. It's just kind of the thing I thought when I said it, when I saw it. Here you've got the back. It's very gothic looking, and yet 40k. Very good. These are what I really like. These are what I think are really cool. These four separate, or these different separate uh, pieces here. Comms relays. It looks like comms relays. They've got speakers here, which you usually see for the comms pieces. And here's a what looks like a comms backpack for a normal trooper, just modified to be a little bit bigger and chunkier for a piece of terrain. Yeah, so this is the whole, the entire gun section right here on one sprue. Now let's take a look at your wall sections. You've got two of these sprues, very simple. 
all you have is two long sections and two single sections. So there's one screw and here is the other. Let's take a look at the different individual sections. Now I've seen a lot of great paint schemes for them. Some of them paint them as just standard gray, like they're stone. Some of them have been painted green, like the Cadian color scheme. Here's one pitted with a bullet, bah, 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 bullet holes. Very cool. There's more bullet holes. Some look like they're uh, different, different grade weapons. Here's one right there. So yeah, and here's a clean section. Very cool, I'm going to enjoy using it. I'd love to hear some of your tactics for using the Aegis Defense Line with Quad Gun, especially for an inexperienced Imperial Guard player such as myself. The line of sight for my special weapons and stuff, do I have to keep them behind these little eye slits? Does that mean that when the enemy fires, they get shot up first? So I don't know if I want to put a flamer behind there or a plasma gunner because if the enemy is peeking through these little eye slits, peekaboo! I don't know, but I, I bet they still get their cover save. It's just, um, I don't know. Let me know, what are, what are the, some of the coolest tactics you have for using them? Thanks for commenting on my videos. Uh, sorry I haven't been able to get all the comments to all the comments yet. Like I said in one of my earlier videos, it's been a crazy couple of weeks. So uh, there you go, the Aegis Defense Line for the Games Workshop. Uh, 40,000 Warhammer 40,000 game. Hope you guys liked the little video and uh, I will skip to the end just to show you the finished quad gun and separate sections all cut out. Stay tuned! And here we are watching a sped up version of my assembly. I decided to do this in a fast forwarding kind of format because a lot of time was taken up with the mold lines as you can see. So I use the back of my hobby knife because if you use the blade, a lot of you veteran hobbyists know out there that it tends to get, like really gouge into the plastic and um, you have a chance of ruining small details. So plastic cement is always the best. I use Model Masters. There's that turret piece coming together. Cut out the quad guns and the little ammo feeds there. Oh, mold lines. There's horrible mold lines down the middle of both of these quad guns. Terrible, terrible, terrible. And it goes all the way over every little detail. So take your, take your time. And continuing on. I'm also cleaning the mold lines off of the ammo cases here. And this one I had a hard time trying to figure out which side was which. You could see that I kind of had stopped and had to go back, but the way I figured it out was you when you actually look at it from the side, there's the heads of the bullets facing forward. So I, I didn't notice that with the rounds, so that'll help you as a guide. Just look for the, the, the front of the bullets and just aim them forward. Then you gotta clean the little barrel tips there and put those on. They glue really nicely though, and you don't have to drill out the middle of the barrels. Really nice. And then I cut off the little uh, servo skull looking thing there, glued that in, and the headlights. Bada bing, bada boom! Quad gun is just about done. Yeah, and as always, nasty mold lines right in the middle of that. There you go! And here we are at the end of the Aegis Defense Line super fast build. So as you can see, I built my my defense line here with the, or the quad gun, rather with the spotlight and this little, uh, I guess, fox caster thing on the top. It had these this little uh, arch, which means that I could only use it with this, really, unless you converted it up and, and uh, wanted to use it on something else, but I thought it would, it would look cool. I did not use the vox because I wanted to use it as a vox piece, for, a backpack for the rest of my death core because I'm not sure how many Vox systems you get. I don't know if you get one with the regular infantry squad, um, but something makes me think that you don't. So I decided to, to save that because it looks like a regular Vox backpack. For the wall sections, I did not use these things because I think they might look cool on tanks. Say, perhaps a Bane blade that I'm building. 
So I've uh, also decided that I think just the very plain basic wall sections look good by themselves. So here's kind of how I think they would look awesome being used almost as um, sections like this. You've got a primary uh, firing line over here, then you've got secondary position, secondary fallback position, and then a third one over here. Now I know you, you're gonna say, well, who's what's protecting the rear? And um, I don't know, maybe there's nothing or Maybe you build in a little box yourself in like that, uh, almost like a like a small little section like that, and then have one squad in the front, one or two squads in the front, and then the command squad and everybody else in behind. What do you think, or, or what have you seen works well for you guys? I also think maybe having this either here or like right right out in the front, so you could hide somebody to operate the super gun here or oh maybe even here wow how's that that's pretty cool you got one guy on the little computer screen back here operating the gun kind of connecting these two pieces um, or maybe even doing double pieces so many interesting ways I love Lego I love Tetris so yeah I'm gonna have fun building this up, but let me know what you guys have found works for you. I love this kit, it's great. So thanks for watching, hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, the one thing I do wish was that the, the gun swiveled up, but that's okay that it doesn't. Um, yeah, I like, I'm, I'm gonna leave it off so I can swivel it around like that. It's just too bad it doesn't angle up like a Hydra, Hydra flak tank. That would have been super cool. Anyways, thanks for watching everybody. See you in the next video.